Please welcome the next speaker, Thomas Rafalski from the University of Arizona. Would you like to have a microphone at hand or? Przede wszystkim chciałem podziękować za zaproszenie. Ja będę mówił po angielsku oczywiście, ale e, chciałem wspomnieć e, po polsku, że, e, myś, że traktuję e, laureata jako mojego wujka i ja jestem bardzo wdzięczny za przyjaźń i za długie lata współpracy, e, o czym będzie więcej mowa w czasie wykładu. E, i, Wszystkim dziękuję za ten moment i 120 lat chciałem też życzyć paru profesorowi, któremu jeszcze miałem okazję życzyć. 120 lat i wojną. Dziękuję. So now we are turning to the formal part, uh, uh, which uh, is coming up in a moment. I took the liberty of mixing a few personal reminiscences with uh, hard science. Um, and uh, I will wait for Ivo to come back, but perhaps uh, uh, he, uh, I should point out um, yes, uh, that uh, we, of course, didn't meet uh, entirely by random. Uh, this is uh, certainly already on the web. The catalyzing force was actually Ryszard Kajewski, uh, who, uh, uh, whom I met because of another uh, friend, but we cannot go all the way back. Ryszard, uh, 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 was, once he met me, uh, was definitive that the person I need to meet and work with was evil. We, he said we are the perfect match for each other, and we, uh, our mutual uh, uh, work would be lasting. And I will talk today in the science part of this lecture on what I think is the most lasting uh, of many works which we both have done. Uh, namely about this, how to approach correctly the structure of a vacuum in uh, matter fields. And I'm still waiting for Ivo to come, so I don't want to start the lecture, but I will point out, while we are waiting, that uh, the um, three letters which are associated with the approach, D, H, W, contain Wigner in the end. Uh, so it's another good reason uh, to celebrate uh, memory of Wigner. And the other, the D is for Dirac, and I will point, point to some nice coincidences. <laughs> And uh, then uh, H is Heisenberg. And you see here uh, in this nice uh, uh, picture uh, two letters of reference. So after Richard introduced us, I invited Ivo while he was in Pittsburgh uh, to give a colloquium in Arizona. And I have dug out because I am a little bit, uh, I, I hoard documents, I don't throw anything away. So I looked up. Uh, uh, what is there about Evo in the f folder Evo? And I, I felt that it is important to notice that Richard called him a versatile scientist, somebody who can do anything which uh, he's interested in. And his great friend uh, Pratt uh, said, weight authority in quantum molecular dynamics and quantum optics of obviously the two fields that Pratt was working on. So the, uh, so the Richard says anything, and Pratt says what I work on, he is the world expert. So uh, that was quite a recommendation, and, uh, uh, and you see here uh, uh, documents which uh, relate to his visit. Uh, in a few months uh, uh, before his appointment, uh, uh, I have noted in uh, the, uh, uh, his accomplishments, as were known at that time. Uh, Ivo got a, in, a PhD with Infeld, uh, postdoc in Rochester, and that's where the relation to Pratt comes in. 
and various memberships for the Academy of Sciences, or in the way Academy of Sciences is the then Marie Curie Sklodowska Prize. Uh, that was status in 1958 when he was visiting me, and uh, that's what I, how I introduced him to the Arizona, in Arizona Colloquium. And, the, and then he returned the invitation. You have to remember 1988-89 state of war in Poland. Uh, uh, I came in September, actually, in the end, after some forward and backward, I was able to visit Poland in uh, October 88. And I found uh, uh, Poland in a really in turmoil. Uh, and it was 20-some uh, years after I left Poland as a child in 64. And it was quite an experience for all the uh, members of this audience. You have this memory, I have no doubt. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, there are lots of memories, of, uh, and I obviously cannot go. But what I would like to mention, but uh, before I come to technical uh, uh, presentation, so here you see uh, papers which followed on uh, so, so this is I pulled out from Acta Physica Polonica uh, 60th birthday celebration, and we see here quite some people who uh, contributed, uh, including uh, Zellinger, whom we have had uh, before, and uh, I was talking about entropy, and at that time uh, we were still publishing uh, together, as you see here in these two items, on the structure of a vacuum using the method I will introduce. Uh, but, uh, and this is the contribution which you find in Acta of the Capolonica for the 16th birthday, but uh, I soon needed to turn to another topic, because what we do often in science is not determined by what we want to do, but what the world wants us to do. And so that is, um, unfortunately, in some sense, Ivona's wonderful lecture also expresses it, because I saw a physicist talking about computer science, and um, uh, it is an uh, interesting experience that we all have our constraints uh, in some sense. And uh, so here is how it happened that I needed to change my topic, because I proposed to the funding agency to continue the work on vacuum structure, but the funding agency funded me for vacuum, applied vacuum structure called quark room plasma. Not for the fundamental structure, which, is, uh, which I and Ivo really enjoyed uh, doing. And the, in white, you have here my presentation from uh, uh, 1991, asking for money to continue working on vacuum, but I got money to work on quark room plasma. So you see, that's where the break is, that is Google, and you see uh, uh, very clearly that there's a bridge. I, of course, we have already done uh, work on quark room plasma before, but we stop and quark room plasma takes off. So that's, uh, you can look uh, and check and you see how it works. But Ivo and I always met in private and we wanted always to change the world. And you know, works which change the world do not occur every day on command. So we are still working on it. So this is the approach which we pioneered, dynamics of a QED vacuum in external fields. And this is the list of papers which came out of it. Most of the recent work, recent means 10, 15 years, is done by Ivo and collaborators, Ivo, Sofia, and others, because Professor Rafalski is still busy with other things. Uh, but maybe times change it. So, so what did we invent? Oops. What did we invent that is so useful and is so lasting? We had the courage, for reasons which, are, which will be explained in a moment, to tackle the Wigner function description of vacuum structure and find a gauge invariant path to it. Because, as you all know, when you write quantum equations, you write in terms of potential gauge invariant, and uh, any dynamics of observables 
has to be gauge invariant and therefore have, must depend on the fields only. And how to make this transition was an unsolved riddle. Another riddle, which was unsolved, was how to create a system which evolves in time. People were doing, as he was says, all kinds of nonsense, two-time formulations, because you see relativistic invariant formulation requires when you split the point in Wigner approach two different times. And what does it mean to have two different times? That was never answered. And so we, we had the luck to try the right thing. And to try the right thing was to put here a phase which is not a normal phase which you see in gauge theory but which really you find in Ken Johnson's 60, 960 effort. In Heisenberg. In Heisenberg it's also, yes, but we, I learned it from Ken, from, Ken. <laughs> from his lectures, and uh, we can argue about it. There is a Heisenberg paper which uh, is very important, yes. And, but I have on my shelf proceedings of Boulder School of Theoretical Physics, where Ken Johnson probably borrows from Heisenberg and explains how to do it. So if it's Heilberg, uh, uh, clearly there were precursors, they taught us what to do. So we could actually try it. And of course, uh, Ivo uh, tried it, and we all know Ivo is uh, a fantastic, uh, uh, he wrote the function in uh, this way, but the moment, uh, let me, let me, uh, uh, so this is uh, the, uh, function which we are looking at. I'm following here the sequence of my presentation which tells me that it was not good because I had to jump a slide. Uh, and you have equations and this equation initially came back in one plus one dimension version. And then Evo was ready to publish a paper. <laughs> I decided that to put pressure on my one generation older colleague. You have to remember, we are 17 years apart. That's a little bit more than one scientific generation. And so to have the courage to push it, it was my courage. I said, Ivo, no one is ever going to cite us if we leave it at one plus one dimension. And Ivo looked at me and agreed, went back. Next morning, he announced the first thing. You know, he was waiting for me, so to speak. There is a three-dimensional approach. And that is the equation written here. So you see the Wigner function of the interacting uh, uh, vacuum can be written, once this operators are properly defined, with all the i's and h bars. Classical Wigner function needs always i and h bar visible something we ran halfway. And the, yes, because we published few uh, h bars missing, so. <laughs> but things, you have to put them back later. And, uh, and then, of course, our structure of the vacuum was expanded, and this expansion lives on today in this uh, similar form into all 16 different functions you can introduce, which describe uh, parity conserving, parity non-conserving structure function of the vacuum. So you have to remember, when you look at somebody else's work, there's one function, scalar function, spin zero. When you look at our work, you see particles, antiparticles, spin up, spin down. Four times four equals 16. 16 different structure functions which are interacting and describe the evolution of the vacuum structure. And the equations which are... Uh, oh, sorry, I... Okay, so now the operators, the, the generalized differential operator in time, the generalized operator in space, and the momentum. And you notice if you have constant B field, then there's already a lot gained. I was thinking about Ah, the panic trap, constant B-field, half of the problem solved. And the other half is also integrable because it's a linear in position. So I think we need to look at panic trap again in our indirect approach. But this is another project uh, for the next stage. 
And you see the classical limit can be expanded. You have a very <coughs> simple relations. All operators are real valued. All functions are real valued. And these are the set of 16 equations. Some are vector format. So it's very easy to grasp it once you have it. I don't want to point out to any particular choice, but I remind at the bottom that the F0 is the equivalent of density, G1 vector is equivalent to current, F3 is to scalar density, scalar like in wave scalar, uh, F1 is pseudo scalar uh, uh, charge, G0 is pseudo scalar vector, F2 is pseudo scalar like in wave scalar, G3 is magnetic moment, G2 is electric to a density moment in the vacuum. 16 functions, and we master them, and they are all coupled and interacting with each other. So the, these equations are supplemented by, so we did not have ambition to make the electromagnetic uh, field quantized, which we saw in previous lecture, and uh, lectures, I should say, uh, but this can be done. I mean, I, uh, we were discussing yesterday how to couple the different Wigner functions, and that's ob obviously an open problem. We don't know yet how to connect photons and electron photons together in a quantum way. So we treat the electromagnetic field in our approach as a prescribed external field, and this is for the purpose for which this paper has been cited more than 200 times, because everybody who is now doing strong field physics in vacuum structure cannot walk around our work. They try to, they try, but they cannot. Because this is the root of the solution of the problem. All the other approaches have been mostly abandoned. And uh, we have certain shortcomings because we haven't really explored in full some aspects which would have been explored if funding was available. Uh, but, uh, okay. and there's a classic limit producing, producing Vlasov equation. I'll just say that it is so. Everybody knows, of course, Vlasov equation, so I don't need to explain. We had the idea to expand it to Vlasov Boltzmann, but it never materialized. It would require interact, electromagnetic interaction. I'm doing it in the daily in daily applications of physics, but we don't have a fundamental approach to derive it yet. Uh, okay. Uh, there's something called axial anomaly, uh, which if we had republished it, we, our results are now 30 years old. We know all about axial anomaly in the vacuum. But we never care to publish it. Neither Ivo nor I nor our collaborators. It remains in the pocket while approximately 30 people uh, uh, work on this very important aspect because in um, heavy iron collisions, People have suddenly re realized something which is self-evident. Magnetic fields are extremely strong, and E dot B is non vanishing So we're creating axial, envi uh, this axial environment in relativistic and non-relativistic heavy iron collisions. The, we spend a lot of time thinking about conservation laws, and we, uh, we have done the structure of a vacuum for the magnetic field because there's Mr. Tsai, who, Dr. Tsai, who has uh, solved it for the final uh, for propagator, so we could use the results to extract the solution. We have done the pet production, uh, which uh, 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 everybody, of course, wants to understand. This is the original. Uh, Euler, Heisenberg, uh, uh, Schwinger, Weisskopf result. I mean, all of the great names have uh, concentrated on, uh, on this particular topic. We, and actually, uh, 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 the pre prequel to this is understanding of a vacuum solution, which I criticized here a little bit in my yellow, yellow injection, because we were so focused on what was the standard picture that we left sitting on the side the question, is the vacuum truly comparatively conserving at all times? We focus on a vacuum which has parity even uh, characteristics, but states in physics have different quantum numbers, and vacuum is just another state. 
and we don't even know that the state is not degenerate. In QCD, it's degenerate many, many times. So it's quite possible that in QED we have also something related to the uh, degeneracy, something to explore. And uh, I have still five minutes at least. Uh, I have seven minutes, so I hope <laughs> this is not a signal to finish. <laughs> and uh, because I have a few other things to say. Pet production I will not address in the tank because just recently on my time scale, that means 12 years ago, uh, uh, Evo produced a much better paper uh, 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 which uh, deals with it in a, which we would have perhaps done if we had opportunity. And uh, we also for a normalization obtained a series expansion of this method which allowed us to renormalize correctly with this with detail of normalization. So we have produced a paper which is the foundation of a new field of physics in a, in a way. Which is mostly, I must say, they are three authors on this paper. There's Ivo, Pavel Gurnitsky and myself, but I would say Ivo, Ivo's mind and skill is dominating that work. And, <laughs> and so it is, uh, and this is where the work done, this is how we looked, uh, uh, so to close a few momentos. Uh, 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 the, I think this is 1991, uh, uh, but uh, so it's a little bit longer away uh, than you think. And, uh, this is a look against the wall, uh, you know the players, and if you look against the pool, then this is how it looks. There were quite a few young people who are all thinking about retirement today, or oh, already retired. <laughs> I am not joking, in Korea there was a Shin, a collaborator of whom we published a paper, he was asked how he's doing, he's retired. Retirement, maximum retirement age in Korea, South Korea is 62 years. So, considering everything, I mean, uh, you know, uh, where my age and the age differential, I can estimate that uh, Shin is retired, and he also wrote me, I will come to this conference if you go there, uh, but otherwise not. This tells me that uh, he is retired. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a, a few words, because we, this we call it Dirac Heisenberg uh, Wigner, about Wigner, a lot was said, but about Dirac, very little. So let me bring up a very random occurrence, just like, you know, out of the blue. So you, everybody knows that Dirac is a French name, so wrongly often it is said that Dirac is from French descent. No, and not at all. Dirac is from St. Maurice in Switzerland, which is on the map right there. And this is exactly uh, on the across from Sun. Sun is here, Geneva is here, and this is France, but right here is Switzerland again. And St. Maurice uh, has even a monument. Hmm. Jean, very small in front of a train station and a beautiful chapel you can climb up, uh, 300 uh, steps at least in the stock up and stone, refuge for the, when foreign forces arrive. You have this wonderful monument where it is written by people who really cannot quite see what happened to Dirac. By the way, we found in the encyclopedia that Dirac got the Nobel Prize for this equation, and they write the Dirac equation there, so it's engraved on the other side of this, uh, uh, of, of this monument. And so it is really interesting to go there, it, and I don't have a long path to go. Because when I was working at CERN, I bought a piece of land in that mountain where I have a tiny house where I rest for the year, writing books. And, and that house, little I knew, it was it not by an accident, is about five kilometers away from the site of the family Dirac, which you can see here the family Dirac in the location, the vets from the web. Oh, this is my material, and this is, I pulled from the web, the lab, and it says, since four generations at your service in wooden products. They, beautiful things they made in the world. And from that family, there was this 
physicists who made beautiful things in, in mathematics and said that beauty in mathematics guarantees success in physical uh, enterprise. And so that's what Dirac certainly had to say. So just a statement about vacuum structure. So this is the paper. I, when I looked it up a few days ago, it had 270 Google citations. And it's growing because everybody has to cite it. As I said, there is no path around evil. And I noticed another thing while I was, I was do, looking for this. Something strikes my eyes because you ask for vacuum structure and so on. And I found my own book, which I wrote with Ben Müller and uh, published in 1985. And I noticed a bookshop in Back Lane offers it for $63. The original publication cost was six. The rise in price of gold was slow. Better investment in the vacuum. There is, where is the final slide? I took these pictures 10 years and a, uh, ago and 22, 23 years ago, Piombino, one is in Piombino and one is at, when you celebrated being 10 years younger. And, uh, and they all have the same expressions. So what is the point? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you yeah, once again.